Hardware enthusiasts are eating so good right now. 2025 appears to be the year of massive upgrades to all facets of computing. Laptop, desktop, graphics cards, and so much more. So big thanks to Intel for sponsoring this video and our trip to CES this year so that we could see exactly what they're cooking up for this year and beyond. First up for the mainstream laptop market, they've got their Arrow Lake H processors coming in. That's the part of the market that uses CPUs at 28 to 45 watts. The non-hardcore gamers who still need competent performance will get the Intel Core Ultra 200H series. They're 21% better in performance per watt than their previous gen of Meteor Lake H and handedly beat the competition. They crush it in single-threaded and multi-threaded performance with the Intel Core Ultra 9285H having 16 cores at up to 5.4 gigahertz. But there's plenty of other options down the stack going to the Intel Core Ultra 5255H with 14 cores at up to 4.9 gigahertz. And they also go hard in gaming, with it being up to 22% faster at 1080p with its integrated graphics than the previous generation, and up to 58% faster than others in the market. And while integrated graphics doesn't always wow, these benchmarks show that it's super competent, especially when you add in their support for XeSS2 with lower latency, super resolution, and frame generation. And my favorite thing about the integrated graphics with Arrow Lake H is that they're actually based on Alchemist, not the newest battle mage architecture, but Intel put in the software work to backport the feature set of XeSS2 to these chips so that you're not missing out. But just because it's Alchemist doesn't mean they didn't make any improvements from the GPU that was in the previous Meteor Lake H setups. They increased the AI throughput with 128 XMX engines, they've doubled the ray tracing with two traversal pipelines per ray tracing unit, and they doubled the L2 cache size to eight megabytes. So a nice combination of hardware improvements with software enhancements. Then you add in the fact that these Intel Core Ultra 200H chips are going into over a hundred different notebooks from their partners, and you have a recipe for tons of people having access to some of the best options on the market. But then they had their Arrow Lake HX chips to show off, the gaming-oriented ones, and these make some killer improvements as well. Not only is the Intel Core Ultra 200HX series going to launch with the latest graphics cards on the market, but the CPU performance is also incredible. Single and multi-threaded performance that leads the industry, but that's also partnered with incredible efficiency, with the Intel Core Ultra 9285HX having wildly good performance per watt. But the big thing there is that these chips scale across a wide range of power profiles, from average power consumption to the extreme. So you can have more efficient laptops, but they also showcase performance numbers from an Intel Core Ultra 9285HX that ran at 150 watts because the CPU still gives performance gains at that power level. That's 24 cores at up to 5.5 gigahertz, scaling well even at the tippity top of laptop power profiles. But they also scaled down to the Intel Core Ultra 5 235HX with 14 cores at up to 5.1 gigahertz. You combine all those advantages with creator software and Intel takes a handed lead in creator and productivity applications. And it has the connectivity to boot with Thunderbolt support, fast Intel killer Wi-Fi, plenty of PCI Express lanes, and ton of USB options. As Robert Halleck put it, it's a hilarious amount of USB support on a laptop. And with over 40 designs hitting the market, gamers are gonna have tons of options to have incredible performance on the go. But Intel knows that all that good hardware is nothing without the software to match it. And while AI is the buzzword du jour, I absolutely love Intel's philosophy behind how their implementing it. They understand that the AI performance is nothing if the tops that they're getting from the CPU, NPU, and GPU aren't paired with a great framework and solid applications. They have their OpenVINO toolkit, which is robust and gives tons of supports for developers. They have support for over 400 AI features right now in so many different applications, and they showcase their AI Super Builder software that allows you to download various AI frameworks that match your use case and have them locally running on your device, offline even. We got to speak to one of the engineers who helped put Super Builder together. They also showcased it to us on one of the laptops that they had, which actually had this really neat design in the trackpad, which lights up every single time your NPU is being utilized, which is great because a lot of people don't even know what an NPU is. So if you have a little, you know, like how we had hard drive indicators way back in the day, if you have an NPU indicator, you can see, hey, this process is taking advantage of the NPU that is inside my Intel chip. And 
yes, AI was said more times than anyone could possibly count at CES in general, but Intel's philosophy is one of giving the user the hardware they need to run everything themselves. The tops, all the processors, are there to serve you, not to have you pay for a cloud subscription to some company that takes all your sensitive data and stores it in their own servers. Keeping things local appears to be what Intel is really trying to do with things like their AI super builder. And then they showcase their new implementation of Thunderbolt Share, where with one cable, you can transmit video and audio across two computers. Which if you know anything about sharing Windows audio, that is an impressive software engineering task. But practically, this means that a thin and light laptop, like something that's running Arrow Lake H or otherwise, could stream the gameplay from a gaming PC thanks to Intel's Thunderbolt tech and software development. This one was fun because it's the logical extension of that dual PC that I got to see Intel show off at TwitchCon 2022. That was an Intel NUC paired with a gaming PC to allow for your streaming PC and gaming PC to be fused into one chassis. But even that still required a capture card to be installed. With Intel's updates to Thunderbolt Share, the capture card is eliminated and you can just stream using one cable to the streaming computer. And then looking towards the future, Intel did say that both their 18A production and Panther Lake are progressing well, with them even having functional Panther Lake systems on display, early testing samples, but still showcasing that it's on its way towards launch. But it wasn't just laptops that Intel wanted to highlight. There's some updates coming to the desktop market as well. Firstly, there's the expansion to the Intel Core Ultra 200S lineup, specifically the non-overclockable or non-K SKUs. So the 35 and 65 watt part chips that will be a more mainstream option for very many office workers and gamers out there, which they are also pairing with two new motherboard platforms, the B860 and the H810, starting at $129 and $99 respectively. With the B860 having a lot of the feature set that most people need, including gamers, Thunderbolt 4 support, 4 DDR5 RAM slot support, Wi-Fi 6, large volume USB support, and PCI Express 5.0. But they also provided a field update on the firmware and software and BIOS updates for the Core Ultra 200S lineup. So that's the overclockable chips that are currently out on the market. Firstly, there's enhancements to Intel's APO or application optimization software that now makes some games go up to 14% faster with it turned on. They also work to adjust the power plans within Windows to yield faster performance as well, as well as processor power management adjustments with an up to 37% faster improvement. And then there was also adjustments to CCF Auto GV in the motherboard settings to yield better results as well. And then finally, new BIOS updates that allow for faster gaming performance and lower memory latency overall. So not only is Intel expanding their desktop lineup with the Core Ultra 200 S series, but then also showing commitment to the previous promises that they made with the chips that have already been launched. And then lastly, because I know Intel's discrete gaming GPUs are always a hot topic of conversation. Number one, it was beautiful getting to see Battle Mage on full display, all the various partner cards and Intel's own limited edition running games here and there. I actually just got mine delivered right before leaving for CES, so it was giving me envy and made me want to go back home and play with it. But secondly, I want to relay what Intel's co-CEO said about the future of their discrete graphics cards now that they've already launched Battle Mage. They're going to continue to make strategic investments in discrete graphics, which is encouraging to hear. So there was a lot of good stuff from Intel at CES this year. I'd say that I'm personally most excited for their AI Super Builder and Thunderbolt Share. The practical implications of those is quite high for my workload. Having my own constructed AI software that's working with my own files and my own details locally, but that's also been fused together to be the best version of the AI for me, such a good idea. And then Thunderbolt Share for streaming, just one cable to make streaming easier. Such a good idea for us as well. So big thanks to Intel for bringing us out to Vegas this year and sponsoring this video. And then also, you know, on a personal note, I'm appreciative that Intel's event took place over less than a total of 30 hours, including the keynote and then all of the demos that we had to do so that I could go and get back home to my family with our newborn. It was nice to be there still and then nice to come back home so quickly. So thanks again, Intel, and I'll see Yins in the next video.